Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're going to make eggnog. And we will get our Merry Christmas on right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload new video you'll be alerted to it yeah merry christmas everybody yes merry christmas everybody today we are going to make eggnog yes it has taken us a little bit of time to get this video out number one we've been in the middle of 24 straight days of live streaming well thank you for joining us if you've been joining us for yes that. thank you for that but also I have been working on this and I kept trying it at late at night using just a couple of eggs and trying different things wanting to get the perfect eggnog. And see, there's two kinds of eggnog that people are used to. They're used to the traditional eggnog. Right. That has that really nice foamy top on it. Mm -hmm. And then there's the one that we go buy in the store. Which is just like a sugar bomb. It is a sugar bomb, but a lot of people, myself included, that's the eggnog that I prefer. I prefer that texture, that creaminess, and I don't want that frothy nonsense that's on top of a traditional eggnog. I just want what I grew up with, the stuff that you go to the store to buy. So you don't want egg beer. I don't want egg beer. So what we did was we kept working on it and working on it, and we finally came up with an incredible eggnog recipe that's homemade eggnog, yep. that's keto friendly, mm -hmm. but it has the same texture that you would get in the store with the exception of one thing. Sugar bombs? No. Ours has brandy in it. Sorry <laughs> if you're a teetotaler, but yeah. Now, you don't have to put the brandy. It is completely no. optional. And I'll tell you what to do when we get to that step if you're not going to use brandy. But traditional eggnog should have some type of alcohol. People like either dark rum or a whiskey. I prefer brandy. I think it brings a nice flavor to it. And we're using St. Remy VSOP. But we'll put that to the side for now. So you ready to get into this? Yes. Okay, now we're not going to call this as a so easy Rachel can make it. Because first of all, Rachel's never even attempted to make this. No. Second of all, we're doing a cook version. Uh, just because I think it gives you better results. So we're going to make like a custard thing. Also, this way nobody has to worry about uncooked eggs. Because you can do this as an uncooked version. Mm -hmm. But we're going to do it as a cooked version. This so is not Rocky style. We're going to be making a custard which is going to include tempering some eggs. So today, we're going to teach Rachel how to make eggnog. So here's what we're going to need. We're going to start off with we need heavy cream. That's going to be the base for any eggnog, whether you're doing keto friendly or not. Now, usually you would have milk. What we're going to use is this Calpia Farms. This is the toasted coconut. It's really good. Any kind of uh, milk that you want that's keto friendly, make sure you're using unsweetened. Uh, we happen to really like this one. And the Calpia. coconut flavor is not going to come through. No. Plus, it didn't hurt that this was buy one, get one free this week at Sprouts. That is a sale. So just make sure you're getting unsweetened and there's no carbs in it. Then we're going to need some cinnamon. Now, we've got some ground cinnamon but you can also use cinnamon sticks. We're gonna kinda of go through the different ways as we go through. We need some vanilla. Yum. Our sweetener is, go is going to be allulose. Now, if you don't have allulose, you can actually use erythritol, but I like the allulose because it's more like sugar and it also doesn't have that cooling effect that you're going to get from erythritol. Yeah. You could also use xylitol, but we do avoid xylitol, number one, because it does have a little bit of an insulin effect, and number two, Tabitha. The puppies. So then we're going to need some nutmeg, and we're going to use both kinds of nutmeg. We're going to use some ground nutmeg, mm -hmm. and we're going to use... Are a whole bean where we're actually going to grind it. Smells this so is the better way to do it mm -hmm. simply because 
Um, nutmeg loses a lot of its potency as soon as you start grinding it down. So when you buy it already pre-ground, it's down a little bit in its potency. Much better to just use it this way. We're gonna do both though. Well, because nutmeg is like supposed to be center stage. Right. Then we need some stevia. And of course, the most important ingredient. Yeah. We need some eggs. Definitely need some eggs. Can't have eggnog without eggs. Well, you could have nog. Yeah. Well, now here's the thing with the eggnog. You're dealing with something where the base is eggs. Use good eggs. Yes. Okay. Don't cheap out. And it, so this sounds bad, but don't cheap out and buy the 79 cents a dozen eggs. You're going to notice the difference. Treat You're talking yourself. about drinking eggs. Well, and the color is going to be that beautiful, lustrous, orangey yellow color you want eggnog to be right okay so you ready to get started yes okay so the first thing we're going to do now you're also gonna obviously need whatever your stove or your hot plate is and then you're gonna need a saucepan and we're gonna get this going on here we've never used this thing before so hopefully i can figure out how to use it good luck there we go okay and then you're going to need some kind of a beater as well now what we're gonna do is where's your cup measure so we're gonna start off with one cup of your heavy cream oh. and there's a reason i'm just going to start you with the heavy cream i'm going to teach you a little trick here all right brand new heavy cream again these were two for seven at uh sprouts this week one cup so one cup okay looks like we may be a little bit over but that's okay so we're going to go one cup of our heavy cream and now we're going to go one cup of our almond milk whatever milk almond milk coconut milk or anything like that and the reason i'm doing it in this order is because it's going to rinse some of that heavy cream out Ow. of the cup measure yeah did we make it to a cup yep we did yay okay so now what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of stir that up a little bit we're going to add to this some cinnamon okay and some nutmeg. We're gonna go a teaspoon of nutmeg mm -hmm. and we're gonna go a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Oh my goodness, that smells so good. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is take one of your cinnamon sticks. Okay. And this part is completely optional and just kind of drop it in there and we're gonna let it soak and then we're gonna remove it when we're done. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is just kind of let this come up to a simmer and get all the flavors of those spices into the milk. Okay, so while we have the milk heating up, and again, real important, we don't want that to boil. We want it to come to a very light simmer just so that it could soak up all the flavors of that cinnamon and the nutmeg. Yum. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a bowl here. We're going to add to that bowl. Some eggs. Four whole eggs. Now this is one of the things that's gonna be different from my eggnog recipe compared to a lot of them. A lot of recipes you're gonna see for eggnog, what you do is you separate the yolks. Okay. You're gonna use only the egg yolks and then you're going to bring the whites later on to a stiff peak and then you reincorporate it and that's what gives you that frothiness. But again, I don't want that frothiness. I want the eggnog you get in the store. Okay. But with the flavor of a homemade eggnog. So we're gonna use the entire egg, four of them. Wow. Knock, knock. Who's there? Egg in the bowl. And again, look at the difference in the color of those yolks compared to if you're buying the 99 cent a dozen ones. Yeah, they don't look anemic. Oh my gosh. That was a good one. Perfect. Okay, so I'll put this off to the side here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our allulose and we're gonna use about a third of a cup of allulose, a third of a cup to a half a cup I like a third of a cup, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some stevia to bring up the sweetness. Now, if you're using erythritol, you can cut down on that just a little bit, like a little bit more than a quarter of a cup. So go a quarter of a cup to a third of a cup because erythritol is a little bit sweeter than allulose. Yeah. But I'm telling you, you're gonna get a better flavor with the allulose. So go ahead and add that in there. Now we're gonna do, we're gonna add to that about 30 drops of our stevia. So I just kind of am gonna wing it. That's about right. I don't wing things. 30. Now take a whisk. Now okay. you could do this by hand, but you're going to 
start getting a little tired. So we're just going to use a wire whisk attached to our egg beater. And what we want to do is incorporate all of that allulose into the eggs and you want to get a nice creamy color. Okay, now we're going to do something called tempering with okay. the eggs. If you were to take these eggs and put them into this hot liquid, you're going okay. to cook them. You're going to get them to all curdle. So what we need to do is bring those eggs to this temperature. Slowly, I imagine. So the way we're going to do this is you're going to take the beater. Okay. And you're going to turn it on. And we are going to very slowly, I'm going to just introduce just a little bit of this milk mixture at a time as you're beating that. You want to do this very slow. Now this part should take a few minutes to do this. Cook with a friend. And we're going to keep doing this probably about five or six spoonfuls to bring it up to temperature. And then we're going to put it all back into the other bowl. Okay, now that we've got that temper, you can turn that off and we're going to go the reverse way and we're just going to use this whisk right here and we're going to, because what we're going to do is we're going to now recook this. Okay, so we're going to get this going. And again, we don't want to, let's move this over to the middle a little bit more. We don't want to get this to bubble because okay. that's going to make it like get a hard skim on it. So what we're going to do is just slowly go the reverse way. Okay, so now that we have everything transferred over, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep stirring this and we're gonna bring this up to 170 degrees. I'm gonna let you do that. Okay. Make sure you keep stirring it don't let it come to a boil or you're going to end up cooking the eggs and get beyond a custard. The idea here is to get to a custard. Now, if you don't have a thermometer, which we actually have my little grilling thermometer, which works great for this. And uh, let's see where we're at right now. We're at 146 degrees, 148. So we're climbing up there. We're getting up there. Well, the easier way to check if you don't have a thermometer, you're going to take a wooden spoon. Okay. And if you stop for a minute, what you're going to do is you're going to kind of pick it up and you want it to be able to coat the back of the spoon. You see how it's sticking? Oh, wow. We're almost there. So you want to get a nice coating on the back of a wooden spoon and that's how you're going to know you're done. Neat. 167. Okay, so we're up there so wow. we can turn this off and we're actually going to take it right off of here to make sure that this thing doesn't... Uh, cook anymore. Cook anymore. And we're going to grab the trivet, which... Can I help? Reaching behind my, I got it. We got it. Do not do that at home. Okay. Now, just to give you an idea, again, wooden spoon. We'll give it a little stir. And if you see how, you can see how it's like a thicker custard now, right? Yeah. But if you look on the back of your spoon, see how it's coating wow. the spoon? That's That's amazing. how we know we're done. To this, we're going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. Again, who measures vanilla? Nobody measures vanilla. Me. Okay. Now we're going to go with our alcohol. Okay. So if you don't want to add the brandy. So if you don't want to use brandy, add a little bit more of your coconut milk and heavy cream. I'd say about a quarter of a cup of heavy cream and a quarter of a cup of your coconut almond milk, whatever you want. Here we're going to go between a third of a cup to a half a cup of branding, depending on how you want it. How merry do you want your Christmas? I want a half a cup. So Woo! let's go a half a cup. Doesn't have to be exact here. That's probably good right there. And go ahead and pour that in nice and slow and we'll stir it in. Now's the hard part. This has to wait. <gasps> how long? Uh, we're gonna wait about three hours. You wanna get it nice and cold and it's going to get thicker as it sits, but we can give it a little taste test and then we'll come back for a final taste test. Do you wanna go first? Sure. Remember, it's hot. Mmm. Wow. Now that's where you can see, do I need to add any more sweetness or anything like that? 
I wow. really believe that a third of a cup of allulose along with about 30 drops of uh, having your stevia, it's the perfect amount of sweetness and then the alcohol cuts it down just perfectly enough. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take our mason jar and I'm going to transfer this I right over this. into a mason jar. Okay, so we're going to take this now, we're going to put our cover on it. And then we're going to put this in the refrigerator and let it get nice and chilled. As hot as it is right now, probably closer to five hours, but three to five hours. We'll come back when it's all ready. Okay, so eggnog is done. It's been a few hours. We're going to give it a little shake. Mm. Smells like eggnog. I gave myself an, egg, an eggnog mustache. Look at that. Looks like eggnog. And we want to give it a little bit of garnish. Aww. We don't exactly have the proper wine glasses for this. No, but obviously not. There we go. You ready? Yeah. Here's the test. Hello. Merry Christmas. Texture of a store-bought eggnog. Wow. Flavor of a homemade eggnog. Yes. The perfect blend. Wow. It's just, it's incredible. It is so good. And here's the thing. I truly believe the brandy is what makes the difference. When you yeah. use brandy over using a dark rum, it just brings that nice flavor. It reminds you of what you grew up with drinking out of the store. Mm -hmm. But you've got the nice homemade aspect. You know what's in it. You don't have any bad sugar or anything like that in there. No. Now, as far as nutrition... There's very few carbs in here. I'm not going to go over all the nutrition facts because it's going to depend on how much you actually drink. Right. Honestly, the most important thing, I will put across the bottom what the nutrition facts would be based on four servings. Okay. But the most important thing is going to be the carbs. The carbs. The carbs are still pretty low. You're looking at probably about two net carbs per glass. You're high in total carbs, though. Because of the allulose. Because of the allulose. That's one of the reasons that I'm using not only allulose, but also using the stevia to kind of cut that down just a little bit. Yeah. So, but again, I'll put all of the nutrition facts across the bottom, but it really is going to be based on how much of this you actually drink. Personally, I could drink that entire you glass. Drink that whole quart. Only problem is that's going to probably be more calories than I'm supposed to have in the entire day. But it's a happy day. But it's Christmas time. Exactly. So, well, that is our video for today. Sorry this video is coming a little bit later in the Christmas season. But it's just in time for Christmas. But we still made it for Christmas. So let us know if you make this recipe. I think you should put it out for Santa. Yeah, absolutely. He's going, you're going to get better presents if you put this out for Santa. Well, that is our video. So please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. That way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.